I'm not quite sure how, but in all these years, I have somehow never made ice cream myself. This was my first attempt at it, and I can tell you, it's absolutely worth making at home. And I should mention that I refuse to buy an ice cream machine. Now, there are still a lot of things I can improve on, but this initial attempt already taught me so much about just how ice cream works that I just really had to share this with you. Let's learn the basics so we can work our way up to the perfect gelato. Gelato, of course, means ice cream in Italian. And how do I know that? Well, because this video is sponsored by Buzu. Buzu teaches you languages online at your own pace, and it's actually really effective and super fun. We'll get to that later, but for now, gelato. In terms of ingredients, making ice cream is actually extremely simple. Any classic recipe will include whole milk and sugar. And in most cases, cream will be added as well. Now, in some cases, egg yolk, starch, or even milk powder find their way into the recipe. But pretty much every ice cream base you find is some combination of these things. Here's what I find fascinating. Every single one of these ingredients serves a specific purpose. And it's not primarily about flavor. Oh no, it's actually more about using the physical and chemical properties of these ingredients to turn ice cream into the delicious treat it is. Let me explain. The very first frozen desserts humanity has come up with were usually based on snow or shaved ice topped with, you know, fruits, honey, wine, things like that. But if you ever had a slushy, I mean, they're great, I love them, but it's not ice cream. One of the key differences is hidden right in the main ingredient of ice cream, which is, of course, milk. Milk is a natural emulsion, meaning a mixture of two things that normally wouldn't mix together, water and fat. Imagine lots and lots of tiny pieces of butter fat suspended in water. If you just put some milk in the freezer, at some point, tiny little ice crystals will start to form. They will grow bigger until eventually you just have like one big solid block of of frozen milk, I guess. But wait, is that milk really frozen solid? Well, yes, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be hard as a rock. However, technically speaking, it's also just a little bit softer than a block of pure water-based ice. That's because, remember, there are little particles of fat hanging out in there, and that is a whole other game. The temperature at which fat freezes and the way it crystallizes is radically different from water. And ice cream makers definitely use that to their advantage. That's where cream comes in. Cream is pretty much milk with a much, much higher fat content. Like cream goes up to 40%, something like that, while whole milk is usually slightly above three and a half, not more than four. More fat is gonna give you a smoother and richer ice cream, but there's a limit. Like at some point, the fat content just starts to get too rich and you might also get little pieces of butter in your ice cream. It's, it, it's not as good as it sounds. <laughs> Traditional Italian gelato, which to me is the best type of ice cream hands down, actually turns out to be a little bit of an outlier. Most gelato makers will actually only use milk or they will add a little bit of cream, but the fat percentage is gonna stay pretty low, not even close to the range of 10 to 20%, which is where most other types of ice cream will kind of be in. In fact, a lot of ice cream makers will tell you that 14% is considered to be the sweet spot by many. And speaking of sweet, let's talk about sugar. Sugar is not just there to make ice cream sweet, oh no. There is in fact an even more important role it plays. You know how really good ice cream is firm but still scoopable when you get it out of the freezer? That's sugar. You see, at some point, people have discovered a concept called freezing point depression. And I know what you might be thinking, but no, it does not refer to a very sad freezing point. Instead, it refers to artificially lowering the freezing point of water. And one way of doing so is adding sugar. One part sugar to four parts milk or cream is actually a pretty common ratio in ice cream making. And this will ensure that part of the water doesn't actually freeze solid when you put the ice cream in the freezer. I am actually mostly using milk with just a little bit of cream for more of an Italian gelato feel, by the way. Remember those egg yolks and starch, by the way? I decided not to use them and go for just milk powder instead. But all of these things serve the same purpose, just in different ways. They stabilize the emulsion, making it much, much more difficult for bigger ice crystals to form when we start churning and freezing the ice cream. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Churning? Oh yes, and we'll get to that. But first we need to actually add some flavor into our otherwise just sweet ice cream base. I decided to make three different flavors. You can find all the amounts and ingredients in the description as always. 
The first one I wanted to make was strawberry mint and basil would also be a great alternative. Then I decided to go for ayran and lime and ayran is of course a Turkish salted yogurt drink. And lastly, my favorite ice cream flavor of all time, pistachio. This one was quite tricky. I had to make pistachio mousse myself and because the color was quite pale, I added a bit of deeply green chlorella extract. You could probably just use matcha powder as well. I mixed each of my flavors with the ice cream base and then added most of it into a plastic box which goes into the freezer. But I also left a little bit of ice cream mix to add into a good quality double seal Ziploc bag. I'm doing this because I want to show you something pretty cool. This is a method sometimes called ice cream in a bag and it gives you freshly made ice cream in like 30 minutes with no special equipment. Because here's the thing, the ice cream we just put in our humble home freezer, you know, making ice cream at home, uh, it takes a little while. But that is obviously not how ice cream shops make their ice cream. Nah, ice cream shops have these huge machines that not only have very, very powerful freezing capabilities, they also churn the ice cream while it's freezing. Churning in this case simply means that the ice cream is in constant motion while it's being cooled by the walls of an extremely cold container. Remember we talked about ice crystals before? Churning has to do with that because what this constant motion does is it kind of stops small tiny ice crystals from growing into big ones, resulting in a very smooth, almost like pasty gelato. But most importantly, these ice cream machines can make you fresh ice cream in like 15 minutes. I'm sorry, but you simply can't replicate this process in your home freezer. But that doesn't mean you can't replicate the process in something else. Enter the poor man's ice cream machine. Look, there's a very specific reason for the Ziploc bag in this method. We're maximizing the surface area of our container, allowing for maximum transfer of coldness into the ice cream base. But that coldness has to come from somewhere. And here's where. I'm filling a big fermentation jug with ice and salt and then layering my flattened ice cream bags in between the ice. What the salt does, by the way, just like the sugar before, it lowers the freezing point of the water, making it melt while still staying really, really cold. So we get sub-zero water sloshing around. So that's the cooling part of making ice cream, but there's also, of course, the churning. And for that, you simply hold the jug in front of yourself and then tilt it back and forth repeatedly. That's it. Do this for the first five minutes, then take a quick break, come back, churn again, chill again, come back, you know the drill. I gave it roughly 45 minutes, after which strawberry and ayran both felt pretty good, at least like soft serve, if not even a bit firmer. But the pistachio... That was still pretty liquid. At first I thought maybe some salt water has gotten into the back, but I think it's something else. Earlier I added a little bit of amaretto, that's Italian almond liqueur, into the pistachio base because I wanted to enhance the aroma of the pistachio. What I didn't take into account is that alcohol turns out to be an extremely efficient way to lower the freezing point of a liquid. So while I had to pass on the pistachio for now and leave it to the freezer, I went for some fresh strawberry ice cream and I gotta say, this might not be the perfect method, but it's really really fun and the results are actually pretty decent. But back to our actual andong sized ice cream servings. It's been over an hour and these are very slowly beginning to thicken. What we want to do now is give them a very, very, very good shake every 45 minutes or so, at least two more times or until the ice cream gets too thick to do so. This is kind of our lazy churning substitute. I let them hang out in the freezer overnight and the next day, ice cream. The taste was amazing, but the texture was uh, just a bit crystalline on the first two. I'm pretty sure the main reason for this is that I added water from the strawberries and also the ayran, which is very low in fat. The pistachio ice cream though was noticeably softer and actually really, really, really good, almost like marzipan. But since I wasn't like 100% happy with the texture of the ice cream yet, I decided to try another very interesting method. And that's chopping up grainy ice cream and running it through a food processor one more time. Once they were nice and smooth, I transferred them back into their container. The main downside of this method is that this ice cream will have to go back into the freezer for now and um, yeah, for a pretty long time, at least overnight. But hey, fingers crossed you will actually get some super smooth ice cream the next day. But there's also another thing we have to take care of. Another thing that cannot be missing, which is of course 
the iconic ice cream cone. We're gonna get to that right after I tell you about this video's sponsor, Buzu. If you watch this channel, you know I love learning languages and Buzu helps me do just that. I really hope I will get to try some proper Italian gelato on a trip to Italy in the future and you know, traveling is just always so much more fun when you actually speak the language. And trust me, even a few simple sentences will go a long way. But no matter how good you want to get eventually, Buzu is there to get you started. You can use it on your computer or your phone. I just downloaded the app, so let's see what happens if we try to learn some Italian. So. App is opening up, Buzu, there we go, Italian. Complete Italian or Italian for travel. Let's just try complete Italian and see what happens. If you already know the language, you can take a placement test, very simple, but I'm new to Italian, so, whoa, that's a lot of lessons. Gelato, I found it, I, look, lesson 16. That's a coincidence, by the way. You can practice some pronunciation. Vorrei un gelato. Vorrei un gelato. I should probably approach this in a slightly more constructive way, which is definitely also an option, because Buzu can help you create your personal study plan. You can choose what your goal is for learning the language. Let's say, learn for fun and culture, practice Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. I think 15 minutes a day sounds pretty realistic. And now, Buzu has created like this customized study plan for me. But you know, there's actually so much more stuff in here. There are tools to help you practice grammar, practice vocabulary. And it's not just Italian, by the way. I mean, Buzu is offering 12 languages at this moment. So if you're thinking of improving your foreign language skills, I highly recommend you check out Buzu. Get started for free with the link in the video description. But now back to gelato, or should I say waffle cones. The cone is actually much easier to make than I would have expected. It's a pretty basic batter based on mostly sugar and egg whites. The detailed recipe is in the description as always. The real trick to a beautiful waffle cone is the right type of waffle maker with a pattern like this. I got super lucky and found this one for only nine bucks and that's almost worth it for the shaping cone that comes with it alone. You see, as the sugar and the waffle cools down, it hardens very, very quickly. And whatever shape you give it, that's what it will look like. You just gotta be fast and you can easily have a beautiful cone like this. I can also really recommend another ice cream waffle shape, the waffle bowl. Simply lay your freshly baked waffle over one small bowl and then press it down with a second identical bowl. And look at that. This is actually a shape very commonly used for gelato in Italy. If you don't have a waffle maker like this, no worries. You can also simply spread out a layer of waffle batter on a silicone mat and bake it in the oven for like 10 minutes. It's not quite as pretty, but hey, it's a homemade waffle cone that you just made without any special equipment. Now, after another night of resting, my ice cream was finally properly frozen and it was time to taste it at last. Texturally, all three ice creams were much better after the extra blending, so I guess it's worth it. It's still very different from professional ice cream, not quite as smooth and rich, but still super delicious. I'm gonna use a higher fat percentage next time though. By the way, the exception here was the pistachio ice cream, which was just super smooth right out of the freezer. Thanks, nut butter and alcohol, I guess. No matter if you prefer eating your ice cream from a waffle bowl or a waffle cone, be sure that making it yourself is incredibly rewarding and I hope that you understand what's happening there and why just a little bit better now. Thanks for watching.